What's up everyone out there in YouTube land? This is Perry Love Whistle back in Project 1999. And first of all, I need to say that if you are one of the people who have made the comments that uh, you like my videos because I'm not the overexcited shoutcaster that normally makes videos on YouTube, uh, I'm sorry because I am really excited about what I'm doing today. So I'm probably going to be upping the energy just a little bit. So that's just the warning. But the reason why I'm here in Northern Row next to Frankel is Valios is out. It's actually been out for almost a week now, but it was a pretty busy week for me at work. So this is the first time I've gotten a chance to get on. And uh, Valios is a big deal for a lot of reasons, which I'll get to in just a second. First of all, um, I want to plug a couple of Project 1999 YouTubers that I recently randomly stumbled across. I'll leave links to both of their channels in the description of this video, but they are EQ Gamer and EQ Guides. Uh, it looks really good, and I like watching their videos, so I just wanted to plug them in this channel. So go and check out some of their stuff. They're currently doing a uh, playthrough where they're both playing monks and uh, starting in the Kantos area. So check that out. Now, Valios being out, the first thing that that means to me is I get spells. I get six new spells, but one of them I don't have yet. Because it is sold in Iceclad Ocean. So, uh, these six spells are all pretty useful. So, first of all, I've got uh, Sea Invisible, which is a utility spell, pretty obvious. What? Well, that's odd. They haven't changed the uh, the spells yet. Hang on a second. Oh, you know what? I bet it's because I purchased them. I bet it's because I purchased them early, and they're not going to change. I wonder... All right, well, uh, apparently I can get all of them in Rivervale, except Bramble Coat, which is fine. It's just a slight upgrade to my uh, self-only AC and damage shield buff. Um, and it only upgrades my damage shield by one, so I can live without it for now. I'll put that on my to-do list. Uh, so while I am running over to Rivervale... I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the other things that make uh, Valios great. In case you're not aware, um, so I, I didn't have a lot of really good Kunark content, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is I, I wasn't really a high enough level or the right class to enjoy uh, the content that was available at the time. Uh, if Kunark had dropped right now as I was level 40, then there would have been a lot more stuff that I could solo... Um, a lot of the really good content in Kunark is dungeons and stuff like that that open up to characters in the 40s. And also, one of the big things about Kunark is it was a very complex expansion. It, it added in the new, new player character race of the lizard folk and the and had a whole lot of content specifically for them that wasn't really great for anybody else. And the rest of the continent was, you start on opposite ends of it, whether you're traditional evil or traditional good. And the whole thing is very non-linear. It's big loops and a lot, of, uh, a lot of traveling and a lot of options for any different leveling range, depending on whether you're soloing or grouping. But the the big thing is very non-linear, very true to original EverQuest in, in that manner. So the big difference in, in my mind is actually something I, I just recently discovered with Valios is Valios is very linear. And I'm sure somebody is going to disagree with me on this, but um, but you can put the recommended levels next to a 
a connections map and see that it, there's a very obvious intended path through Valios. And I seem to be just at about the right level to take that path. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to hopefully do uh, one episode per zone per level. So today I'm going to be hopefully getting to level 41 in ice clad ocean. And we will see where things go after that. Well, after a fruitless run to Rivervale, uh, and then a search online, I think the levels for those spells don't drop immediately in Valios. Uh, it, it might come out as part of one of the later mob revamps or something like that. The Call of Sky spell, which is for sale in Iceclad Ocean, should still be there and should still be available to me at level 40, 39 specifically. I'm going to look more into that, and I dropped those spells in the bank just in case. But as a heads up, the Valio spells that that are available to rangers at lower levels once Valios comes out are not available to rangers yet for whatever reason, whether it's right or wrong. So uh, just waste a little bit of time running around Antonica. No big deal. Let's head back to the uh, docks. Oh, you might also notice that I have been given the additional four hotbar slots, but I'm not using them. That is because when I try to use them, let's uh, let's add hide to here, and then zone. It clears out back to just six, which uh, is a bug that is obviously already been noticed by other people because that's everybody not just the five rangers that play so that has been noticed and is on the list of things to fix hey perfect timing it looks like i got back here just as the raft is pulling up is it pulling up or pulling out did i miss it no i didn't all right so now my journey into Valios actually begins. And let's hope this goes a little bit smoother than my journey into Kunark. I know a lot of people aren't even going to take this boat because it, it gains you nothing and there are plenty of people porting directly to Iceclad. But, you know me, I like the boats. Uh, in this boat particular, there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of really awesome design work that went into it. Not this boat. The boat that this is taking us to. I also think this is going the wrong direction. Why are you going north? Oh, and it snows just as I zone into ice-clad ocean. Couldn't be any more perfect. Of course, just like Kunark, this little skiff takes us to a much bigger boat, only this one, in my opinion, has a much better design than the one in Kunark. I mean, the one in Kunark, it, it was great and everything, but it was just a bigger version of the regular boats. This one is... It, it's designed to, uh, to really bring home the, the whole setting of Valios. Oh, wait. First, we've got to stop at the little, the little island, get off the little boat, and then we get onto the big boat. Our first step into Valios, meeting Joshel the Large. And he says... There's nothing on this island except for the dock on the other side. And tracking confirms that. Ooh. We get a nice transition here from the sand of the Desert of Roe into this 
black rock, white wood. Now we sit over here and wait for the icebreaker. And here it is. Just look at this thing. And th the other great thing about Valios is all of the uh, all the different races are uh, are the same, right? You you come to Valios just as an outsider, so there's a sense that sort of everybody is working together on this and there's some uh there's some lore about that too that came out with the game um talking about uh so a couple of different named npcs or uh, not npcs but characters in the lore one of which is uh tolan of the tolan's darkwood armor And uh, and pretty much just describing how they they all sort of went in and got to different zones. And I'll uh, I'll see if I can leave a link to one of the lore websites that has all that stuff in the description below. Oh, also I just got a heads up from a higher level ranger. If anybody uh, manages to play in Valios and get into ice-clad ocean in the next uh, next couple of months. There it is. That's why it's called the Icebreaker. It's got these giant hammers. Yeah, is in theory, right? It's it's an Arctic Ocean, so the you need to actually physically break the ice to be able to sail through it. It's pretty cool. Um, sorry that. I don't know why something that small and simple gets me this excited, but here it is. Uh, anyhow, I did get a heads up that there's a ground spawn that is uh, eventually going to stop spawning in Ice Clad Ocean. So if you uh, get into Ice Clad Ocean and you manage to pick up a uh, piece of driftwood off the ground, hold on to that because once it stops ground spawning, uh, there is a ridiculous... Uh, bow that you can quest with it and it's multi-questable and uh on the blue server people are paying around 100k for the multi-quest if anyone still has that uh that piece of driftwood so i'm gonna be spending a long time in ice clad ocean trying to get to level 41 so hopefully i'll pick up some driftwood on the ground and squirrel that away in the bank and Maybe use it to buy something really cool later. Wow, the uh, iceberg path is a lot longer than I remember it. But got to be getting closer, though, because uh, people are popping up on track. And we have officially arrived. Now all we gotta do is get a bind. Here we go, Call of Sky. I can't get a bind just yet, but I can't just sit here and not try and kill one of these cougars. Uh, they should be the right level because they, yeah, we're getting some dark green and some blue. So they should be exactly the level that I need to kill right now anyway. We just have to make sure that we... Uh, don't get in and over our heads because I don't think that the gnomes will kill them. Make sure to cast the right spell on myself and we're going to give this 
Call of Sky spell a try and see how well that works. Oh, we got a nice proc off of our uh, Call of Sky. 35 points. And a noticeable increase in experience. And of course, nothing on the Cougar. Uh, there is a chance for the Cougars to drop a Cougar Claw Earring, which would be an upgrade to one of my earrings. But I would say that was very successful. <laughs> that was a pretty... Pretty harmless kill. I uh, got a good chunk of experience out of it, so... So I guess what's next is uh, a montage of cougar killing. Also, while I'm in ice-clad ocean, it's important to bring up that Adenel Jail Bar here sells the Deluxe Toolbox, a 10-slot giant capacity box for one platinum. It's basically the best bank box in the game, and at one platinum, you pretty much have to get it. And you can see in his inventory here, some people have already sold some other things to make room for it. There's a traveler's pouch here uh, which is not a great item um definitely somebody not somebody's bank bag somebody's weight reduction bag for walking around but uh worth scooping up the deluxe toolbox and probably running that over to thurgoden to put it in the bank i'll probably do that later and if the first island which only spawns cougars becomes too boring there's a little bit of an ice flow bridge over to the second island the second island is going to have uh, more cougars but it's also going to have the tower of frozen shadow where there's going to be the uh, shadow guardians around it which are about the same level uh, more aggressive and they actually have loot aside from the super rare uh cougar claw earrings they drop normal loot for things around this level namely uh research components and stuff like that so same experience but the odds of actually bringing in some money along with them and here right in the middle of the second island is the tower of frozen shadow i hope i can do an entire level and an entire video inside of this. It's one of the uh, best places to group around my level. Uh, maybe a little bit below me just because the first floor is uh, stuff in the 20s. But uh, there's some decent drops and there's also some pretty good lore around the Tower of Frozen Shadow. It's connected to Mistmore, just like... Uh, the Drachnids from Kunark are loosely connected to Mistmore. So uh, some cool lore there and an otherwise completely out of place uh, item out here. But it's got these um, Shadow Guardians that spawn around it, which are aggressive. They are also uh, Monk class, which is important to know if you're going to be face tanking them like I am. Uh, they hit often, so damage shields are definitely worthwhile. But I'll kill a couple of those guys too. And by a stroke of completely random luck, I happen to be in the zone when uh, Lodazol, who is a raid mob, spawns. Uh, he's on an 18-hour spawn cycle, and safe space is here to kill him. I went ahead and asked them if it was okay if I videotaped them taking him down. 
He's got uh, some awesome direct loot, and also he has loot that goes into some epic level quests. So obviously every time he comes up to spawn, a bunch of high levels hop into the zone, take him down real fast, and uh, and that'll happen every 18 hours until it gets boring. And the uh, last thing to see in this zone is, I mean, aside from the, uh, aside from the ring where you pour it in, is the bridge over to the eastern wastelands, uh, called the Great Spang, which is Great Span. It's supposed to sound roughly Nordic, but it is a huge dragon skull which is awesome um, and then this giant bridge that leads over and that is about it uh, ice clad ocean is by nature a very simple zone uh, doesn't take a whole lot of time to see all of it and all that's left for me to do is grind out these last three and a half bubbles and you don't want to see that, right? Of course not. So I'm going to work on leveling up a little bit and getting ready for the next episode, which hopefully will be the Tower of Frozen Shadow. But until then, bye. Bye.